Hi folks, for uh, those of you who watched part one and part two of my brick drum reassembly for uh, Pinto and Mustang 2, there's one thing that I neglected to put into parts one and two, which was the order in which you assemble all of this stuff. So I'm going to go through that for you right now. Now this may not be the only way order to do it, but it certainly uh, worked for me, so and it took a lot of tries to get there, so I'll just show you what I've done here. The first thing that I found is, the first way to do it is to start off with the leading shoe. Now, to the left in this picture uh, is where the front of the car is, so you're looking at the left driver's side, and this is the rear drum. You can always tell the leading shoe, the one that faces toward the front of the car, because it has a shorter section of pad material, as you can see from here up to here, it's quite a bit shorter pad material than the trailing shoe. Don't get them mixed up. They can go on in the opposite order. If you do, your brakes won't work properly. So the top, so what you have to do first to put this leading shoe on here is if you put it on a little bit, a little bit cockeyed off to the side here a little bit, you'll find that you can put the, the spring and the little retainer and hat on quite a bit easier. If you try and hold it in its final, final position, you really have to push on that spring quite hard and you're just gonna mess up your, your thumb trying to do it. It's pretty difficult to do. Now step two is to put the trailing shoe into place. Now before you can put the trailing shoe into place, you'll need to hook the the parking brake cable, which you can just sort of see in the background in here, if I can get enough light in there, which is that spring right down there, and it hooks into a notch on the bottom of the brake activation bar, which is this plate right here. That plate hooks on up here at the top through the trailing shoe. Once you've got that assembled with the park brake on it, and you'll want the park brake as slack as you can make it because you need that slack in order to be able to get the end of the parking brake cable through that activation bar. Once you've got that uh, assembled, then you can put the, the shoe and the park brake activation lever into place on the drum again assembling it with the little spring and retainer and hat again it's going to be fun to do but uh, you can get it there and you'll see that the uh, the little pin has a T shape in the end and it has to be 90 degrees to the slot that it came through if you do that it'll it'll stay on if you don't at some point you'll hit a bump and it'll spring off then the shoes will come apart and well I don't need to explain what would happen to your brakes then now once you have those assembled, you also have to put in this little drum and star wheel, if you can even see it in the picture here. This is the, uh, the self-adjuster mechanism. Ignore this plate for the time being. We're just talking about this section here and its star wheel. Now one end free wheels and the other end is threaded internally. You want to make sure that it's screwed all the way in so that this is as short as possible or you're not going to be able to get your shoes on, uh, the brake shoes that is. And make sure that you grease the end that's just a, an unthreaded lug that the other end of the, of the fork goes on to so that it'll spin freely. If it seizes up, you're going to have problems later and they do tend to rust so that's a good idea to, to take care of now. Once you've got that in place, the next step is to put in the brake balance or the parking brake balance bar. Now this is it back in here, immediately under the under the uh, slave cylinder. You can see it going across here. And at the leading end, in this case here, which is toward the front of the car, is the narrower end of the fork that, that the sort of uh, rectangular coil spring fits over. It's got a narrow notch because it fits only onto the leading shoe. The other end here, if you can see it here, just under the end of the spring 
has a wider notch because it fits not only over the shoe itself, but also the end of the brake of the parking brake balance bar. So it has to fit over both of those. That's why it has a wider fork. Now, once you're holding all of those several pieces in place, it's time to uh, put in the uh, big top springs in green in this picture. Now, if you don't already have one, I'd highly recommend you get one of these tools. It's a cheap piece of crap tool, tool basically, but it has some important points to it. See this end here with the little notch in it. What you do to get one of your springs on is you just simply hook the shank of the of the spring onto it and then they'll hook this little notch onto the top pivot post. Kind of hard to show, but as and as you turn it like this, the spring will slide down that shaft and hook onto the pivot post. For removing the springs, it has this end here. This will save you a lot of messed up fingers. It has a hole in the end, as you can see, and that hole fits over the pivot point here. And when you rotate it, it hooks onto the spring in behind and lifts it out of the way. That can save you a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> now, as if doing all of this stuff wasn't troublesome enough, when you get the shoes lined up, where the, uh, there's protrusions here and over here from each of the shoes that go into the slave cylinder here. You'll have to push the two shoes in with your hands to compress the, the slave cylinder. And make sure that the tops of the spring, or the tops of the shoes are engaged evenly on this lug here, okay? In behind it to help hold the shoes in place is this little metal plate in, and then on top of that goes the end of this little cable here. Then, and only then, can you start putting the springs on. Of course, everything's going to try and come flying off as you're doing this, so it's, it's a bit tricky. It's kind of like patting your stomach and rubbing your head all at the same time. But it can be done. It may take you several tries. Don't worry about uh, tensioning that, that cable yet. Now what holds, now what the, the cable does is it runs through this little metal guide here. There's a groove around the outside of it and the cable runs through there. What holds this little guide plate on is it has a protrusion in the back that fits into a hole in the shoe. And what holds it all into place is the butt end of this spring here. So you have to hook the spring through the hole in the guide plate and then through the shoe get it up into the right proximate position and use your tool, the one with a notch in it, to put that spring on. Once you've got that spring into place, you can put the second spring on, the one from the leading shoe. Now, once you've got all those hooked up, you're most of the way done, but not quite. Now, the final step is going to be is to assemble the self-adjuster. And this is kind of a brute. First of all, you have this spring here. It's in the center of the screen and it is a monster. It's way stronger than the ones that hold these ones up here that hold the shoe on. And it all attaches to this little bracket here. And you can see up in here, the spring hooks onto the bracket. And there's also this little cable, which runs all the way up and through the groove up to the uh, the pivot at the top. Okay, the easiest way that I found was to hook the spring on down here, hook it onto the plate, grab onto the plate right here with a pair of vice grips and stretch it as best you can until the hook on the end of it fits into this hole at the bottom of the trailing shoe. Once you've got that done, then you take this cable here and you carefully feed it into the little groove around the top of the, the guide here. And you grab onto the, the uh, spring, or the uh, lever rather, down here, 
with a pair of vice grips and you slowly pull it up this way so it rotates this way to give you a little bit of slack. Then you take another pair of pliers or vice grips, you grab onto the little cable here, it's got a hook on the end, and you hook it into the same hole that the spring is hooked into. If you're not careful, what will happen is the little guide wire here, where it goes around the, uh, the guide, will go in behind the guide. Then you're going to have to pull the whole thing apart and do it again. Because once it pops out of that guide and goes in, it goes in behind it, there's an enormous amount of spring pressure holding it in place. And uh, it's, it's tricky. Um, you can use several screwdrivers and an extra pair of hands if you've got them handy. Or you can use long needle nose pliers or something like that and work your way around. Um, it's not easy. It can be done, but it's, it's pretty difficult to do. Unfortunately, you can't just hook the cable on and then pull it at this end because the cable, the, the eye of the cable is retained by the springs. So they have to go on uh, after the little uh, guide plate or the cable end, which makes things a little bit more difficult. Now, once you've got all of that done, it's time for a test fit of the drum. And uh, if the drum is kind of seems to be cockeyed, then it's the shoes and they can, the whole assembly of the shoes, if you, you bump them, you can move them back and forth from one side to the other a little bit. And all you have to do is keep doing that until it centers and then the drum should go on. So the final step, of course, is to put the drum on and the wheels. And if you've done it right, you should be able to slide on there like that. You may hear a little bit of, if there's are new shoes, you may hear a little bit of uh, kind of a bit of a drag sound to it. Don't worry about that. Uh, first of all, it'll it'll wear in very quickly in the first in the first mile or so. It'll be it'll it'll be smooth, and uh, because usually it's just the, ed the ends of the shoe pad material is not really chamfered, and it will chamfer in a little bit just as you as you drive, and that'll work fine. And that's where the self adjuster mechanism. If you've got that all assembled correctly, and you can see the relationship of the little finger and the star wheel down here as this activates what happens is this will pull up it'll grab onto a little the little star wheel down there and it'll actually move it a notch and just actually spread the shoes just a tiny bit anyway hopefully that's of help best of luck to you <laughs> take care